Nine in protest in response to the Trump administration, ignoring the Bureau's request to keep that House Republican memo private. Ray instead took a different approach today by sending a video message to his staff saying, quote, let me be clear, I stand fully committed to our mission. I stand by our shared determination to do our work independently and by the book, I stand with you. He goes on to say, quote, talk is cheap. The work you do is what will endure. We're going to keep doing that work because we know who and we know what we are and because we know that our mission comes first. The American people come first. After that memo's release, former FBI Director James Comey hopped into Twitter to say this, quote, that's it. Dishonest and misleading memo wrecked the House Intel Committee, destroyed trust with the intelligence community, damaged relationship with FISA court, and inexcusably exposed classified investigation of an American citizen. Having said all that, with us to discuss the implications of today's memo release on the FBI, Robert Anderson, who spent over 20 years at the Bureau and served as Assistant Director of Counterintelligence under then FBI Director Robert Mueller. Uh, Mr. Anderson, I, was, I heard someone very smart say on television that among the things we gave away today, unforced errors, we've now told the Russians when we were conducting electronic surveillance in case they want to go back over anything they said in case they want to go back over their steps. Um, what's your reaction to what happened today and what was lost today? Well, I think, uh, first of all, Brian, I think you're right. I mean, some of the things that are being talked about on the media and on the news, all because of the memo that came out, which really subverted the whole process that is set up to handle these type of situations in a classified and secure environment. It does give our adversaries insight into exactly how we look at, review, and in some cases extend coverages into our national security world. So I think that's something that needs to be looked at and addressed. Oddly, what it shows the world is how rigorous a mm -hmm. process it is to get a FISA warrant and there are so many reasons for yeah. those steps and why so many people have to sign off on it. But you're saying it's way too high a price to just give away this kind of information. That's absolutely right. And I'll tell you, it's, it's a good point you make. I mean, if you've been inside the national security arena, especially in the FBI or in other United States intelligence community organizations, the FISA process on a U.S. person is extremely rigorous. There are so many checks and balances built in from the field office level through the general counsel, the national security law review branch, and the FBI headquarters, and it comes up through the highest levels of the organization. And I can tell you, having been the assistant director of counterintelligence and signed off on hundreds and hundreds of FISAs, they never make it up the first time. They don't make it up the second time. There's numerous reviews before they even go across the street to be signed off by the deputy attorney general and then the attorney general. And when you're in front of the FISA judge, this is no rubber stamp. I've testified in FISA court many times. Some of these testimonies take hours, and there's a rigorous review. So I think people need to understand that. It's not the rubber stamp that you hear some people say. Well, thank you for that. Uh, last time we had you on the broadcast, I was reminded because you had just written an article about how Robert Mueller yeah. works a case uh, for Time Magazine. Let me take you back to your own headline and tell me, at this moment in time, how do you think he is working this case? What do you think is going on? I think he's going to keep doing exactly what he's doing. This memo is not going to slow him down one bit. I will tell you, if anything, what I read today further substantiates that the investigation that Bob Mueller is conducting is a righteous and forthright investigation, which actually substantiates a lot of the allegations that are written in the FISA package. So I think the memo does nothing but strengthen that case, and I think Bob Mueller is going to drive straight ahead. What if the man above him is in peril? What if Mueller feels his budget or investigation is in peril? What do you think he'd do? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, I think you got to look at the team, and you got to consider the team of this as Deputy Attorney General, because he's a strong man, been in the department for 27 years and highly regarded. You know, I don't think he's in much jeopardy, as everybody says. It, I think it would be a crucial mistake if they tried to remove him. I think that the team that's in place right now will go about this strictly under the rule of law, and it won't matter what side of the House that you're on, and I think those uh, evidentiary proceedings will commence. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.